Hi guys and welcome to our boat tour. Just a little information about Morna. She's a Dickies of Tarbet gaff catch built in 1920. She's 48 foot on deck and 61 foot spar length with a draft of 6.6 .6 feet. We're here on the bow. As you see, we've got the nice bow sprit stuck out. It's around nine foot long. It's held down by the chain you can see there. That's the uh, bob stay. It goes down to just below, uh, below the water line when we're sailing or just above at the moment. And it's got a pulley system there. You can loosen it and tighten it so we can pull it out of the way of the anchor. You've got the two stays coming off it to stop it from going uh, sideways. And then you, we've got a furling unit on top there. It's just a simple brass unit that holds our jib ob so we can furl it like a modern boat can. Just saves having to keep changing uh, sails, etc. So we've got the, as we said, the force, uh, the foresail there, but that doesn't have anything to do with holding the rig up. The force stay is here on the, on the bow, and that's here, and that's what the staysail is uh, hanked onto. And that's the staysail, it sits on its own boom there. It's just tied up at the moment. This is the old style you hank it on, and then this is the halyard here. At the moment I've just got it hooked down so it doesn't, I can pull it tight and put it out of the way. Um, other than that, that's, that's the staysail. Then you've got the, the inboard end of the bowsprit here. The bowsprit comes into its uh, mount here and it's held in with a pin and wedge, keep it nice and tight. The two lines you can see on it, one's for taking the force stay out, uh, foresail out, sorry, not the force stay, and the other is for tightening and loosening off the uh, bob stay there. Here we've got our windlass, it's a mare, um, quite a modern one, probably only put in in the last 15 years. 10, 15 years, and it's brass, unlike the, uh, you can get them all in stainless of course, but this one's in brass to make it look the part. And then we've got 12 millimeter galvanized chain, we've got 100 meters of that, and that of course is held on, uh, on the other end is our spade, that's an S140, 30 kilogram spade, which has been holding us really nice. Held us last night in a storm, it got up to 40 knots, held us quite nicely, so that was good. And then here, you can just see this is the snobbing. I've put these onto one of our cleats, these are the forked, forward cleats, big old galvanized things that hold that all in place. This is our fore hatch into the fore peak there, nice and easy for sail changes etc. And then here is the, of course, the big old main mast. This is brand new, we just had this replaced a couple of months back just before we set off in July. That's all nice and shiny. Here's the stays for the main mast, you see the three here, these two go up to the cheeks and this one goes to the very top of the mast or about a foot down from it. And then, of course, we've got the light here and uh, built onto this wooden mount. And then we have here is the topping lift. There's two of these, one either side. And then here we have the uh, topsail halyard, I would guess that's what you'd call it. It goes to the very top of the mast, runs through a block, and then comes back down, so it's double-ended. And then the signal halyards. That's about it, so as you can see. And the turnbuckles, like a modern yacht, onto build, built onto stainless uh, chain plates, the, uh, the guap's laying down there. So, as we said, this is the main mast. As you can tell, it's quite a, uh, a bit to it. This one's eight inch diameter, fits in nice and snug inside the mount here. So, rigging wise, we've got a double-ended throat uh, halyard. So it goes from, from here, it starts at the top, comes down here and goes back up and it goes at the top it's it goes through the block like this so it's got two ends and then these two here go from their block connect to those ends and are then here uh, it's quite complicated and what it means is that it can be pulled up from both sides but only halfway and then you have to switch sides i'm going to change this to a more uh, single row system which a lot of boats have this one that gives you more purchase so if you're not strong enough to pull up the gaffs, this one gives you more, more purchase, which is uh, probably why it may have been done. But I find it quite easy to pull this one up, so I'm gonna switch it to, uh, to just having one line so I can do it all from one side of the mast. Anyway, so you see you've got a red one. That's where it starts at the bottom there. So it's red because you never pull that because you pull the whole thing out. It's this side here. 
you pull that down and that brings the block down and start to see hoist up the uh, throat there and we've got one this side and one the other side which we'll show you in a second then here we've got the jib halyard so it's pulled in at the moment of course because it's furling so we just leave it set but it also has this block in tackle so we pull it up as tight as we can but being a furling unit it has to be really tight so then we attach this block and tackle on pull it in an extra couple of feet all we can tie that off and then just taking the slack on this one making it much tighter than we can normally pull on the other uh, halyards this side of the mast we have more of the uh, gaff rig itself the main gaff and here we have the staysail this is just simple rove up through a couple of blocks down to staysail just a single one here we don't have the uh, block and tackle on it like the jib does we just heave this one up and uh, put it in place then we have the same throat the other side of it here again a red don't pull and this one you do that gets it up the rest of the way and then here we have the peak halyard that's just simply rove on this end so you do all that from here and that's what i'm saying is why i'm going to watch it switch it over so throat and peak can all be done from this side because it makes it much easier at the moment what i have to do is i ha get it halfway i have to tie off the peak go around the other side finish off taking a throw top then come back and finish the peak but if you haven't pulled the peak off enough it capsizes and jams and it, it becomes a bit of a uh, ball ache so i'm going to change that and then the last bit down here is of course you've got the saddle here with the uh peril beads on them and that just uh they that's just to stop it if it ever gets uh weight taken off but when there's the weight of the rig on it it's always being pushed against the mass so they don't really do anything it's just in case the rig was to get messed up that stops it from completely falling away and then of course it's laced on with all this six millimeter here and that just keeps it nice and firm against the mast this is the other set of stays again the same configuration all up here here's the other end of the uh, topsail halyard and here's the other topping lift the only difference we have currently at the moment is the staysail boom is currently on here and you can see this mounted here and then tied off stops it but normally this block and tackle would be at the bottom of the mast and that's where i'd then tie this off and you can set it they're like a sheet i'm going to in winter get this all redone i'm going to row it back with some blocks all the way back to the cockpit so it can be set because the moment you have to come up to the mast to set the staysail with next time you know if you were to go from a close hole to a beam or something you have to come up let the boom off and uh, reset it where i'm going to change it so it can all be done from the cockpit and of course the other signal halyard oh while we're here i forgot to mention it on the other one these here are just tied down you can adjust the length and these are just what keeps the jib sheet coming in a bit like a car would on a modern one at the moment it's got modern blocks but we'll swap that for nice wooden ones at some point so up there you see the spreader just below the or next to the spreader are the main cheeks that's what all most of the stays are on there and a lot of the rigging connects to including the throat halyard then just above it there's another set of cheeks that's where the peak halyard starts up there and uh and parts of the running back stays are fitted there because they come in too so it starts at the bottom and then further up then further up you've got the metal rings they're holding more of the peak halyards in place as you go up the mast and then the, finally the last stays at the very top and of course on the very top of it is the antenna there for the VHF of course we've got a nice chimney here that we fitted with our new stove the life raft just sits under there it's got a hammer for if we capsize it can uh, open up hopefully of course that will never happen and then under here at the boom where the boom meets here the uh, gooseneck as you can see there's gearing it's a gear here this would have used to have been a uh, boom furling unit so it would have had a big system here and you crank it and the whole thing spins round and fills up the uh, main but don't know what happened to that must have gone a long time ago but that's the remains of it probably when i replace this boom at some point i'll build a big stronger mounting system for it as it doesn't need this one anymore uh this bolt this one here is for the reefing it's not finished yet i need to come up with a better system really i might put a block or something in there so we can tighten it up but that's parts of it and then uh that's it for here so underneath the boom here we've got these two lines they're the reefing pennants you probably saw me set these up in one of the other videos they go up and uh, you can pull them on these here and they when you're reefing it pulls part of the sail down you tie them off so you've got the port and starboard here but they can be swapped around in case, depending on which tack you're on and then and that's it for the boom really there's not much else apart from the sheet we'll get to 
you've got the throat just there and then here are the peak halyards pretty simple they just rove through this is where we set up tender as you can see we had this cradle made by peninsula who made the main mast for us stainless steel which is fine we might uh, give it a bit of paint to make it look like brass or something but it sits quite nicely here these can use it to strap it down and then you've got the main uh, saloon butterfly hatch there that's why we opened it we had to open this one up so that's why it looks different so we can open the hatch nicely so tender was built in the 80s i believe I should say over here 1987 for a boat called pelagius i think you pronounce it as anyway um, we found it in marine bazaar in plymouth uh, that's where we brought it as you can see here i've got a bit of rigging set up this is how we launch and retrieve it we put this on connect it to the throat halyard means we can lift it up send it out and retrieve it the same way so here at midships we have the running backstay comes in here comes down to its pulley there and goes back to the lever we'll show more of that in a bit also down here we've got the mid cleat of course it goes through the fair lead uh, this is the block and tackle for the foresail on the sheet when we're further back I'll, I'll explain that also we've got a prism here to let some more light in and this is the vent it opens up and that's because the uh, galley's just below us there the main hatch here simple sliding arrangement with a washboard in it and two butterfly hatches either side that open up let some uh, light and air in and you've got the our main bedroom butterfly hatch let's light and air in again and then up on the boom here you've got the main sheet which it starts at both ends comes through is rolled through and then ends so the main point of it is just down here as you can see like a load of elastic bands there's as it shifts around gives it a bit of compression uh, then it comes through the blocks and comes down here so this one is this page shows it's not uh, it just goes around the cleat and then the other side as we'll have to show you around is where it goes through another another block which gives us an extra purchase when you just need to get that last bit of inch bit of a uh, inch or so back on the uh, main sheet when you really want it pulled in tight so this is the other side of the uh, main sheet as you can see it comes through down to this one and it's fixed to that cleat but this time we've put an extra block in and that just gives you an extra bit of uh, pull on it if you need to get it in really tight oh and there's the gas bottle it fits quite nicely here they used to have a larger one but it was a northern ireland bottle so that's why the mount's bigger but we've uh, we can only use english ones or british ones anyway and then there's the stopcock for it there okay this side of the midship this is the starboard side and this is one where we've got our water fill there and that is the pump out for the old uh, good old black water tank a nice holding tank when we need to release the crappen and of course we've got a sleepy sleepy dog relaxing so of course we've got the mizzen mast here in the cockpit but first we'll show these are the stays uh, these are wider spread than the main mast because this one is just held up by these stays where the main mast are uh, closer in because it's got the running back stays to help hold it in place these ones are further apart it means it doesn't need any running back stays and being only a mizzen mast it doesn't have that much weight on it down at the bottom here you'll see is where we have all the connections uh, like a belaying area not much on it topping lift for the mizzen mast it has the same on the other side as well and then this is where the jib sheet blocks start so they start here go up through a block and then come back down to here this again because we don't have winches gives us an extra purchase on pulling in the sheets so the sheet starts at the jib comes down gets connected to a block that block then has this line roved through it and then we so when we pull this it pulls the block towards us pulling the sail in nicely here's the aft cabin hatch this one you can get in and out of as well but we're going to change it a bit because i want a larger washboard and better ladders also we open this up you can see the nav equipment we'll show you that when we set inside that's going to get changed because i'm going to fit some new nav equipment at some point but for now it's working quite well so here on these stays we have these beams connected which just have our gps mushroom on it then further down you'll notice so this is of course where the main sheet comes to so we've got the whole sheet coil up there this is the furling unit and again the um, sheet starts here goes up to a block and comes back to this 
and a cleat. Oh, while we're here, I'll also show there's a running back stay lever. You can see it comes up and that releases them. You pull them down when that's not in the way and it pulls them in nice and tight and that's how those work. And that means normally when you're sailing on one tack, you'd release one so it's slack out the way of your sail and the other one's tight and then as you tack, you put them on. So we've got the mizzen mast. This one stayed, as I said, with the side. But it also has a four stay just to help it, but it literally starts at the top, comes through an arm and then back onto itself. And that's what keeps it from bending too far back. Then you've got the two halyards here, throat and peak. This is how I want to set up the main mast, where it's just on this one side. So it's the throat here starts at the top, comes down here, goes back up and down to here where you pull and that pulls it up. When I do the main mast, it'll be double this. So it'll be a double block, so it'll go up and down and up and down. But uh, that's good enough for the mizzen as it doesn't weigh much. And then the peak halyard, just like the main mast, uh, main mast, you pull that up. Pull them up together, keeping it right, and it goes up nicely. That's, uh, that's about it for the mizzen mast. There's not much on it, apart from, we've got a little halyard here for a little flag at the top if we ever want to. Other than that, pretty much exactly the same as the main mast, just a lot less on it. So this is the helm, the cockpit here. It doesn't look very uh, secure, but it actually is. It's, uh, we've been in some quite rough weather with it. Feels nice and secure. Lean on this, feet go in here, nice and simple. Tiller, straight to the rudder. There's no, uh, no system between it. It's literally straight connected to the rudder stock, straight down. So it's uh, in some, when it's heavy weather or sailing quite a bit of weather helm or anything, it can be quite a bit of force for this. Well, we've never had that much trouble. The main problem is we've got an offset prop, which means it's always trying to go off to starboard when, you, when you're under engine, which always means you have to keep readjusting. It puts a lot of weight on the helm as well because of the wash. Uh, here we've got the throttle controls. Hydraulic drive means we've got the two. So this one here is the actual throttle. Push it down and more revs. And then this one here is the gear. Pull it up to go backwards and push it down to go forwards and of course it's also gearing so you push it a little way down and it's uh, if you only want to go slowly and then further down but you can also control the revs so you can get just the right speed or we'll push it all the way down and push down the revs and we travel at about 1500 revs will give us about six knots so here we've got the engine controls as normal as you would uh, no key start for this one so you just push the button for on then push this down for start or to heat it up if it's really cold, but we never had to use that. And then to stop it, turn it off, you just press the stop, and then of course turn off the system, the ignition. That's about all there is to it. And this is our depth sounder. We're probably gonna move this when I redo all the uh, nav, nav equipment, because it's kind of hard to look at this while you're trying to sail. We're controlling the throttle, etc., anchoring, so we'll probably move that somewhere else. But at the moment, it's down there. So as you can see through here, the aft hatch, we open it up, push that down, you can see there's a screen just there that has all our um, nav on it, and then the compass is just here as well. And while we're here, I'll just show you this. I've got this not long back. It's a man overboard strop, a rescue sling, so we can throw that over. It's just shackled on down here, and you circle the person who's overboard, and it should, you can see you tow it, and they, they grab it and get into it, and that just gives Paige and me a bit more um, Peace of mind if anyone goes overboard. So this side we have this little hatch here, opens up, and we've got our electrical connection for mains, and also in there, you can't really see it, but just in there is the main fuel tank, well, the fuel tank, and there's also a stopcock in there to stop the fuel. That's just there. And then, so, you can't really see it, but just here is a fuel cap. A fuel one there, as you can see. So for that, we'd open that up, fill it up. But to check levels, because we've got really high tech here, we've got a nice stick. We stick that down the hole and it tells us every one of these is around 20 litres. So we can work out how much fuel we've got. If it's above the last one, it means we've got plenty of fuel. But that's, uh, that's 20, 40, etc. And we can work out how much fuel. That's our nice high tech uh, fuel gauge. So we've got here, of course, the rudder stock with a nice old brass Mourner 1920 here, for the original. And then here we have our binoculars cupboard, or currently the snap cupboard, which Lance has worked out how to get into. And then further back, 
we of course have two more big galvanised cleats and a hatch here into the aft not sure what we call it, storage it's the aft cabin stops about here giving us plenty of space under here as well it's not really any good for um, a cabin but it gives us a nice place to store stuff so all the fenders are down there of course the fuel tanks down there and other bits and bobs and that's how you get in the hatch there and then here we have the mizzen sheet so it's just connected on this cleat this is just single it's nothing complicated like the big main it's something little again it just comes up to the block there and roves through and then the cradle to hold it in place we're walking towards Matthew's grotto. It's like Santa's grotto in here. In the fall peak. Oh, ow, my head. Right, shows around Jura, man cave. Well, it needs a lot of work yet. It's one of the rooms that's been left for a long time. So at the moment it's just really a, a storage with my tools and that, as you can see. So this used to be an old bunk, um, but now it's just really a big shelf. As you can see, it used to have shelves and that, but I, I got all my electric st old stuff, old cell covers, and then the little generator that you probably saw on one of the videos, or will see on one of the videos, I'm not sure when we were launching this. So, you may have not seen it, or you may have seen it, but there it is. That was a cheap one we brought from uh, Aldi, 1200 watts, hardly charges anything, so we need to get a proper one at some point. Um, all my different warps and sheets and old rope, etc. Drums of rope that we've still got from when we re-rigged and I've still got some more re-rigging to do not the actual rig but stuff like um, the guard lines etc so more drums up there and then there's a long shelf there with loads of bits of old wood well new wood but it's stuff I haven't used yet for in case of emergencies and some spare oars etc this one goes down here that's full of bits of rope for various things and spares and as you can see the chains in front though it's not been settled very well or probably nothing they could really do is the chain comes down on the actual divider so there's a tire in there and we normally put the big fender in as well sits there and that pushes the chain forwards so that keeps it all in place to make shift until I, I make some kind of frame to set that probably an old drum of diesel which, which is for pouring oil and stuff into um, random stuff electrical tools like drills um, saws and grinders and all my normal tools like hammers, chisels, files. Matthew has everything. about how many hammers do you have? Or is it hammers or something? I think I've got eight or ten random ones from mallets to rubber to wood. They're just normal claw hammers, all sorts. In case, just in case. I've got a crowbar over here somewhere. Uh, and all my other tools like drills, hand drills, etc., and saws. And then this is the tools I normally use more often, like my uh, set screw. Uh, screwdriver sets etc and spanners and chisels and files and just random nuts and bolts and then some drawers with old bits but they need replacing this one's actually fallen through so that needs sorting uh, wet weather cupboard with all the wet weather kit inside well it normally does but because it's been raining we've been using it that's all in there and then that's it oh and some spare anchors we've got CQR, Fisherman's and a fortress and of course, as you can see here, it's the new mast. Coming straight through here, stepped on the uh, the keel, of course. And that's it, that's, that's the four peak. It's, uh, it's a bit of a mess, as you can see, but it's uh, it's all working. But that's a job at one point, I'll come and, and sort all this out, but there's more important bits to do. So guys, welcome to the saloon. I'm gonna do a panorama, there's Matthew on the sofa. Panorama, so you get the feel of what the saloon looks like. Everything is still a work in process. Yeah. Now, okay, Matthew. Okay, so this is our saloon. Uh, you'll see that it's quite different to when we uh, brought, well, enough paper to put a picture up. But we've done some changes. Mainly, we put a table in the middle and the two main saloon sofas and put the stove in. As you can see, it's, uh, I've had to use plywood. It's marine grade plywood, but it's not top top notch, so that'll be uh, it's temporary. I mean, the frames are all permanent, but the, uh, the plywood, etc., is temporary. So some bits will change, and it, of course, needs varnishing and finishing off. I'm still going to put another box in here below the fire, and that'll be like the ashtray, but currently that's up there. Yeah, we've got the stove made by Dean Forge, which is uh, not far from Plymouth. I can't remember the name it's actually made at, uh, the place it's made at, but they're called Dean Forge. This one's got a little stove in the top, and it's a uh, five, four, four kilowatt or five kilowatts, quite good. See the chimney goes out. It's at an angle because that's where the original 
chimney used to go for the little stove that was originally here. So instead of cutting, filling that hole and cutting a new one, we just enlarged it, put our one through. We've still got some more trim to add to this. As you can see, it's got uh, the white stuff here is um, heat proof stuff and the frame underneath. And it's got gaps. I don't know if you can really see. You can see the gap there look, between a more heat proof walling. So to make sure that the wood doesn't get warm and there's a gap around the back here make it all nice and safe as recommended so that's nice that keeps us warm um i built this little cupboard here that's where we all put bags and bags of coal and it goes into here and then we built in the back of a normal like you normally would there's little doors in the back random stuff and you can also put stuff underneath and then we've uh, we've used slat wood here but we ran out before we left so this one hasn't got any slat wood yet, but I intend to, because this is soft wood, I intend to replace it with hardwood at some point. So it's, uh, and we'll finish it all off. Again, we need to finish it all off that back here and, and all the places need finishing. Uh, we moved, we moved this cabinet because it was falling apart and we did have a TV up here, but that broke. So, and we don't really need it while we're sailing. So it's only there for winter. And I'm going to put a bigger cabinet in with the TV in it and then etc. and the Xbox. Um, also, we're not sure, we're, we're going to have a book, places for books, as you can see they're just sat there at the moment. Bookshelf and that side probably for alcohol. But we might also have cabinets come down, so to be across the top here to fill in. Um, probably get a better idea from this side. So from about here kind of thing across, you'd have other, other uh, cabinets with space underneath for alcohol, which would just give us more storage. Um, the table we got, that's quite nice. It's a bit big, so, but, so we have to raise it to open the leaves. But it does a really good job, and we can put our whisky in the middle. There we go. So that's there. Uh, so that's a nice, nice bit. So it used to have a door. When we, when we go back further, you'll see the, um, the bulkheads are different. Uh, uh, with the door and etc. They all used to be the same. There's a wasp flying around. I'm not sure how we've got a wasp on board. I mean, it's, it's raining and horrible. Uh, so this one used to be the same with a door here. So, but we removed it, removed a couple of these panels, and we cut it, this bulkhead out, so the galley and the saloon became more open, which was quite nice. So let the heat travel from that better as well. But we got to trim that, yeah. Yeah, it needs all trimming. And we're going to put a, uh, a pillar coming up here to the top to finish it off kind of thing. Also, as you see, the old bulkheads go into, was cut into this, so I've got to fill this and make it all neat still. And that's more winter jobs. We also have you, that bit carved oh, yeah. in. Oh yeah, yeah, that was carved in. That was what the original beams used to say, because of course the deck's new. Well, 2008, which is new for, for Mona. And that, and of course I've got a lot of varnishing to do. And that's the saloon. So this is my galley. It is very, very, very tiny. So I have these bits are all my storage bits, my baking shelf, our plates are up here. They sometimes end up on the floor in the sail, but ah, it's fine, the plastic. These are my mega drawers, so ta-da, normal drawer. Ta-da, that goes back miles. So yeah, we've got really long drawers. This is just a cupboard under the sink. A nice little stove, which actually has a grill this time, because Nova didn't have a grill, so we can have cheese on toast, and you could probably do your nachos in there too. My kettle. All British folks have got a good kettle, it is blowing a gale outside. And there's not really much to talk about in my kitchen, we've got a weird little side sink. Well, it's. Uh, I'll talk about my bits then. Oh yeah, this is, you can do the, well, yeah. you can cut me out in a second and then you can, I'll change to you. So there kitchen we've got a salt water pump normal pump and a weird ass little sink that doesn't let anything down and you have to get a little plunger on it's it it's probably because it's got an airlock in the piping i need to sort that and now to matthew so as paige was saying we're going to change this so we've got these these here but we feel there's not enough space to do much it's quite limited space for cooking so she was quite impressed with her long drawers, but I'm probably going to get rid of them and put the sink deeper so we can put a board on so it gives you more workspace and probably get rid of these and make these shelves uh, stand alone so they're just above there and that would give more workspace at the back, but we're not sure. And maybe lower the oven as well so you can put board over that so you've got all this space for preparing food 
Um, as you've seen, Novi used to be able to do that. You, you put a board over the sink, etc., and give you more space. Is that the dog? Yeah, he's been kicked out while we do this. He's uh, up there. So that's that's pretty much what we want to do. Yeah, lowering the sink and probably making it a bit bigger. And uh, and that's all we're going to really do with the galley. It's quite nice that it is, apart from of course adding trim and stuff. And whilst you're in the kitchen, you might as well talk about what's under your feet. Oh yeah, under my feet. So we put. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry. We used to have. Um, not sure what they're called. Not inflatable. Um, water bags. And they used to be saggy underneath. bags. Yeah, used to be underneath here. But I replaced them for solid water tanks, so two 60 litres, so we've got 120 litres. And there's a sump there because the drain for the sink, both sinks um, go down to that and then it pumps it overboard. And, and that's what's under there. It's got 120 litres, but in the stern there's space for another 200 litre tank. Um, so what I'm going to do is fit that and that will feed into one of these tanks. So like a header tank would feed into this and then be pumped up. So that would give us about 300 litres. That's the plan. Oh, the door got stuck. Ta-da! Well, this is the heads, uh, just across from the galley, of course. So we've got the sink I fitted, nice corner sink. Uh, I've quickly put some cupboards in, they'll get properly built in and uh, fitted properly. But the main one is we plan to put a uh, shower floor in and make it all waterproof and then we can have a shower in here. I put new heads in and turned it so the old one used to face forwards but this one now faces inwards so you can wedge yourself in. Uh, this wall's here, as some of you may know on the old pictures there was like a wine rack and stuff but there's now a 60 litre holding tank behind this and a, um, uh, the hot water tank and an accumulator and bits and bobs and uh, the water pumps back there as well. I think that's it. Might be more stuff. And this thing, this um, so when I piped the head, the holding tank in, it's got a diverter valve, so you can go to the holding tank or go straight out. It extends the um, time we can be at anchor, etc., because it means liquid can go straight out and solids can go into the holding tank, uh, which is quite good. And then because the holding tank's above the water line, you'll see it here. There's a switch, and there's uh, at the bottom of the holding tank. There's a macerator pump which pumps it out back through the uh, sea cup there. Uh, down here you've got the water comes up and uh, of course we've got two tanks so there's a switch down there to choose which tank we're using and it goes through that filter and that's, that's that and that's, uh, that's the heads really and, um, pretty much all there's a water fill pipe and there's the outflow and a bit like you would normal on a head so there's a bit of work to do in here uh, waterproofing it and turning it into a shower um, Maybe this winter, we'll see. But first, before we can really fit a shower, I need to increase the water tank anyway, because 100 litres won't last very long if you want a shower. So um, that's that's this room. So Matt's just showed you the uh, toilet. So behind you, where Matt's actually filming from, is your galley, the heads, and then through this door. Oh, yeah, that's, we'll quickly show this. So this is the bulk heads. Um, okay. This is the one that, that used to be like in the saloon. As you see, there's quite a narrow door. So we cut it out and uh, um, and of course made the uh, saloon quite a bit bigger. But we'll go back to Paige in the... Uh... To my boudoir. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, so this is a still again work in progress. So when we originally had the boat, there was a bunk here and a bunk here and a sticky bowl there. I think it was That's... a wash bowl, but a sticky bowl is... It was a wash bowl. It, it was next to the, uh, so the bed. So Matt's now extended the bed to be a double bed so we can both fit in. So these, these rooms are quite um, small compared to some other boats. So yeah. it's a bit hard to get the camera in. So we've got like a little shelf there, which has got a charger and everything on. One moment, let's let's get there. let's get back. There you go. There. That's my little shelf with my books. Matt's installed as a new light because this Ooh, one. We're a bit here, close. Oh yeah, this this is our new light. Yeah. And then there was one here. I need to move the switch still. And we're gonna have reading lights in here. Yeah. And if we turn this way. Oh, this way. We have oh, my wardrobe, oh. which at the minute has a shower curtain on it because. Matthew hasn't done my doors yet. Well, they're quite hard to do doors. It's uh, I need to spare uh, my proper... wardrobe. Matthew's wardrobe. I got I got a tiny wardrobe in the corner. My but one. Matthew does have three, two drawers yes, down here. Yes, I got the two drawers. Pants. I have a pant drawer. Then down here we have our pans. Down there. And you can lift this up, and this has more pans and trays. And it, we'll be putting a door in front, so yeah. it'll look better. Up here we have our fridge. Yep. Yeah. Which and that, is a normal 
I don't know what state the fridge is in, but they, oh, that's not sick in the fridge, it's banana for my banana bread later. So this is our uh, fridge. I and think it it's, a it's an 80 litre fridge with the freezer at the top there. Little freezer. Dometic. Is yeah, that's the one, yeah, Dometic, yeah. Dometic. And that, that fits there, and we're going to put a door in front of that as well. And then a little cupboard at the top, which will get a door as well, but I've just put um, a bit of wood in front so nothing falls out. Here's my storage shelf, which has just got random rubbish go. in my, my hairdryer, which I can't use because it uses too many volts. Hence my hair looking like this all the time. Which is fine because we're sailing. And then... One moment, let me come round. Up here, we have our, our windows, which you... <laughs> this was stuck. You the want, page needs stronger hands you for. You unscrew this and then they push upwards. Or so. come down. Or come down, whichever way. And then I'm going to pass around to Matthew because this here is the engine. And Just then you can talk about all the other stuff too. Paint me like one of your French girls. <laughs> well, uh, so we said we're going to put doors in and trim it all up. So as you can see, it's a working process. Uh, here you can see some of the uh, planking in the ribs here. Yeah, right. looking quite nice. And people have asked if it's wet. Yes. Yes. She's always yeah, wet. She's always quite wet. Um, we'll sort that out someday. Uh, under here is the batteries. So there's four 110 amp hour leisure batteries under there. Uh, with the cut off switch here, hidden out of sight. The isolator switch. And then it's all been wired in fuses, etc. Uh, under here is the engine. So it gets quite loud when you're trying to sleep, but you get used to it. It's a, uh, it's a Perkins Sabre M65, so 65 horsepower engine. It's been uh, shoehorned in there a bit, so of course they uh, they don't fit. The original engines used to be where the uh, galley is now, but they're, um, they were quite small, like five or ten horsepower engines. They weren't that that, uh, that big. And um, what it used to be is the they'd have crew and they'd live in the four peak uh, with a galley in there and they'd cook and bring the food out. So that's that's of course no good, so that's now the new galley. And as you see, the, the engine then had to be moved, it's been shoehorned here. As you see, it's offset, it comes out, it's got a hydraulic drive, the props actually on the, the um, get me head around it, port side and the engine's on the starboard side, as we're facing back at the moment. So that's that. There is another bit. entrance to the engine, isn't there? Uh, well, you can, the, the you can take the sides off and you can go underneath the bed as well. When I extended the bed, I made it so you could get in. Shoehorn this back on now, and uh, so that's that. Uh, bed wise, as you see, we've got this the bit at the end where you put items, pajamas, but we're probably going to put a set of cupboards across there as well for bits and bobs and just increase the storage capability a bit. And there's, of course, trim, etc., to be put on. But this room's starting to get there, it's starting to look all right, and it's, it's doable for now. It's a bit close, a bit, bit, uh, bit close in here. And the dog's crying because he wants attention. So this room is the stone cabinet. It's got two uh, bunks. They're quite nice and cozy, but I'm going to just storage. Um, where, where we get is just hung up here. And as you see, the bunks there, storage again. So this is mainly where all the equipment is. You've got the fuses in here and, cuffs and the switches for them. And then you've got GPS, my radio, all the other bits and dog food. For some reason, and that's always in here. So that's that. Um, working parts. So here is the control box for the power, the Victron Energy, same as what we had on um, Nova, um, blogs, etc. He is really crying up there. Fire extinguisher. This is the plotter, which uses a computer screen, which we need to change to a normal plotter because you have to have the inverter on, which drains the batteries when you sail him. I'll move this out of the way. Like Paige was saying, this is the other part of the engine and where you see the red drive coming off the hydraulic drive. That comes out there and comes off underneath where Paige is currently stood. So I'll just put that back in the fire extinguisher. Oh, we've got three of them on board. Um, the hydraulic drive's under here, under the dog bed. As you can see, there it is, hydraulic drive going out and out the back there. And being hydraulic drive means it needs a uh, hydraulic liquid sump. So oh, let me open it up. And there's the header tank for the uh, hydraulic fluid. I'm just going to make sure there's enough in there, etc. Which is all good. As you can see, the mizzen mast coming all the way down and sitting on the, uh, the keel again down there. And that's it. Oh, and the covers don't close properly anymore. And that's this room. 
Thanks for watching our boat tour, guys. We hope you enjoyed that. And if there's any questions you might have, please feel free to ask and we'll try and answer best we can.